Hey folks, Reagan with TDA. I know everybody is uh, just wrapping up from the holidays. I'm gonna give you a few things that you may want to get for your range bag or replace your entire range kit before you use up all those Amazon gift cards. There's a lot of stuff in here and make your time at the range a lot easier. So we wanna be more really efficient with our time at the range. That's why we wanna bring as much stuff and have it as organized as we can so that we're not losing time that we already don't have enough of. So I wanna make sure we're utilizing our range time correctly. Better utilization means we're more efficient. We get more stuff done there. So it eventually saves you money in the long run so you don't have to make multiple trips, do the same thing. You can adapt this to personal or public ranges. It doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously you can throw holsters and stuff in this box and be cool with it. Or, uh, but if you're going to an indoor range, they don't want you, typically don't want you using holsters. So you can take them out of there and put some other stuff in there. Uh, making sure you have the correct tools avoids half efforts and what i mean by that is like oh this zero is good enough or you know like i wanted a zero here but uh you know all i had was this i didn't have enough targets i didn't have enough to i didn't remember what i did it's it was good enough i can't stand that myself uh and so i'd never teach to that uh, that effect either so i want to make sure i have everything that i need to be able to get good solid data when i'm working my way through this uh, making sure that you have everything you need also tends to avoid unnecessary risk making sure you're not staying down there like trying to you don't have staple guns so you're like ripping staples out trying to put their poking holes in yourself and uh, staying down on the range too long when other people are back waiting for you to shoot There's all kinds of reasons why it's massively smarter to bring a good well-prepared range box out so let's get into it uh, there's other stuff behind here ignore it a lot of people ask me what range bag i use i don't uh, it doesn't really matter what academy has or you know nothing against them or walmart or anybody is I don't really like bags. Stuff tends to get fall in there. As they age, they start to fall in and it's, it's kind of hard to find stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've been looking for a broken shell extractor and it was in a fold underneath a tear somewhere inside of the bag. I'm done with that. I don't use them anymore. Uh, this is actually a Husky box. It's a small one. Uh, my buddy Eric Dornbush, a Green Eye Tactical, turned me on to him years ago. So I actually have them in my trailer. I have like four of them is with targets in them and then all kinds of other gear and other ones and just they're they're really good they work pretty well they're pretty reasonably priced this one's a little bit of expensive for how big it is uh but it, it actually works very well it's comparably priced to a range bag we'll say that so it is rigid so it doesn't fold in or anything like that it's tough it's got wheels and a little extendo handle so it's easy to roll roll across the range i ain't got to carry crap which is kind of one of my things like i don't want to use up mental bandwidth and smoke out early in the day because i'm just trying to get my stuff over to the firing line or close enough to where it goes so let's get into it it does have this little top tray right here uh i did have to bend these out a little bit with some heat it would fall in if i put just a little bit too much stuff in it so uh nice and easy it goes in either side things that i have all the time sunscreen because we're in texas and the sun hates you so don't forget that sort of thing uh bug spray Mosquitoes don't like you either. Uh, if you go to Louisiana or anything like that to do any training and you don't have this, you're probably gonna lose a few pounds and, uh, in, in blood to the mosquitoes. So keep that in mind. Uh, I do carry the small batteries that they don't have battery clip, which is not the best name in the world. I don't have battery clips for uh, AAAs. They don't make those for AAAs. So I just have this little box, got off of Amazon, like $3 for like five of them, go grab them. Uh, they are full of lithium triple a's these are specifically most of the time for ear pro uh don't put alkalines in there they if you don't use them very often they're going to gas out and they will ruin them so i uh, do prefer electronic hearing protection I'm, you know so i have these mostly for my clients some of this stuff in here is going to be specific to instruction and we're not going to get into that so uh but these are quite useful and i keep them and i have handed them off to other people to range that i didn't know just because i hate to see people like not have a good time while they're out there. So uh, I want to be a good good representative of the Second Amendment as often as I can. So uh, CR2032s, these are your typical optic batteries that you see. Red dots are a thing. Just get over that. So I do keep a pile of these. The Duracell is supposed to be a little bit thicker, work better in certain optics. So I do tend to have those. Got a couple of energizers also. There's another one, the Vortex Venom, I want to say it runs a 1632. I have one of those on one of my competition guns since it's not duty. It works good for it, the glass is pretty clear. So I do have one for it also. Uh, big things that uh, you wouldn't, most people don't think about, paint pens. I have a couple of these. I like to mark any screws that may come off on red dots again. I hate to beat that dead horse, but 
mark your screws because you all of a sudden wonder why it's cracked it's because it came loose and started beating itself to death on your slide because you're putting a lot of g's on that thing while you're shooting so you want to make sure those things are actually marked so you can see if they start those screws start to back out also you got newer people on the range never been training before uh, you typically have them number their magazines put their initials on it that way they know whose mags they are and if they're having an issue with one we can trace it back to that single magazine throw it in the trash keep going and that sort of thing not to go too far into that but paint pans are cheap can i uh, got a 10 pack off amazon for probably like six bucks no big deal sharpies or knockoff sharpies is what this is uh man marking targets uh circling groups making sure you're numbering the groups to know which rounds went where and so you're not making unnecessary adjustments chasing the bull or some crap i also use these to write down on the target when i'm down at it like this is my first group now i'm going to make two clicks to the right and one click down and blah blah all that information because 90 percent of the time between the target and the firing line completely forget what you're doing i i get it it's happened to me before i only knows it because it does it so uh mag loaders these are the up little mag loaders nobody in here none of the brands that i'm going to say they don't know me uh don't i'm not pimping them or anything like that like they don't give me any money uh i mean if w once someone's telling you something that they give a kickback from you got to take their credibility into question you should as an objective person so anyway these are about 30 bucks most of the time i recommend getting the pink ones write your initials on them because the pink ones don't tend to walk off but i have about five of these normally i'm down to like three so because they again they'll walk off every now and then so uh right in the rain i have their little notepad with one of their pens on it so i can literally write in the pouring rain and if you just get something regular you can get away with something regular but if you do a decent amount of that you put this in your back pocket it'll be a pile of mush in 20 minutes so uh i like to have these don't have to but again they're on amazon they're cheap uh optics lens cleaners these little things that again I, I got a pile of these i think it was like three dollars i got 20 of them uh you should have all those around for cleaning your optics cleaning your eye pro all that sort of thing save you a boatload of time and you don't have to worry about uh, unnecessary refractive shift that's not really what that is when there's crap on the lenses but clean your freaking lenses all right so uh moving on from that i'll just throw that all back in there i keep a mag brush again available on you guessed it the world's worst place amazon uh 20 bucks these are great for cleaning magazines uh, empty magazines won't save your life get used to dropping them on the ground because there's no reason to hang on to them uh but later when you pick them up if they start acting weird or sounding funny good idea to clean them out these are fantastic this is just a pvc tube threw it in put a cap on each side that way it's protected even if it rolls around in the back of my truck not going to bend it up and ruin it or anything like that these are cones little cheapies these are four bucks at walmart i'm sure they're on some of the other sites and that sort of thing in case you want to set up a course of fire set a limit of advance or anything like that uh seven yard line 12 yard line whatever if whatever your number is that you want you can throw these down and now you've got a quick easy visual reference at not having to like put a mark on the ground and then wonder which mark is yours all that sort of thing so ear pro these are the howard light bolts i haven't had these very long i've only used them for a class or two uh i don't know that they're worth the extra money versus the normal howard lights so cool you know they're, they're super electronic fast they do feel sound a little bit better i guess you'd say but uh for 80 bucks i don't know i think i like the 50 dollar ones just uh, just fine but i do have a set of these in here also i have a cheap set that i didn't mean to get but i did get them accidentally because uh, i thought they were howards and they weren't uh, but they were 20 bucks and they're going on about three years now they work fine um I do throw these in here for in case someone else wants to go to the range with me. I don't have to think about, oh, well, now I gotta go get their Air Pro because I know they're gonna bring foamies or nothing and then we're gonna have, have to deal with that. Got them right here sitting, ready to go. Typically, one of the first things to stop about in class is med kits, all right, and where they're located, all that sort of thing. I do keep a med kit in my range box all the time. Most of the time I have a tourniquet on me. However, got another one on here. Combat Guys Curlix Coflex. Got the little red tab that note is a blood stopper and the cool little patch from whoever don't care but i did throw do keep that in there uh gloves i do go through a decent amount of gloves i get the thinner ones i like the dexterity that you get from them that sort of thing uh i do rip them up a decent amount so i got about three sets of gloves in here in a plastic bag keep them dry in case this is open and it starts raining because the train in the rain and because I'm, I'm a man so uh i do keep these little chamber checkers again cheap off amazon you get about five for five bucks i don't remember 
a good idea to have some of these around, especially if you do a decent amount of training. Some instructors definitely want you to have those in there for anything you're doing uh, when you're not actually on the firing line. It's not a terrible idea. And for public ranges, it definitely like smooths over the instructor's relationship with the local range officers if he's got caught using those. So they, they like that. So uh, if anybody's had a Bob Vogel class, you know what that is. So this is mostly my instructor stuff. I do have a range finder in here. It's just a cheap Bushnell. It's actually for golf, but it works just fine for what I need it for. Marking off a range in case you got a private range or anything like that. Timer, charger for the timer, extra pins, extra Sharpies, whistles, that sort of thing. So that's what's in there. Uh, spray paint for if I do bring out steel targets or there's steel targets already at the range. I usually have a can of that sitting ready to go. Uh, bag of tools, man. There is, this is one of those things that I had to learn the hard way multiple times, spent a lot of money doing it. I have Allen wrenches. I have Torx head wrenches. I have a Noops kit for an AR that has a firing pin. I actually have never broken a firing pin on one of an AR before. Uh, springs, like all the little things that tend to go wrong when you got high round counts and guns got it fixed. I got a multi-tool so I can do all kinds. I can jam it in my pocket and do a lot of different things. Uh, screwdrivers and that sort of thing. Got a front sight tool for an AK. Got a front sight tool for an AR-15. A lot of people don't remember that these actually exist. They're, they're easy to lose, but it's always in this little bag right here. Uh, shoe goo. Like there's been a lot of little stock repairs or little indicators, things that I wanted to put on there. Having this on the range for the price, there's just no reason not to have it. Oh, uh, see, broken shell extractors. I'm not gonna pull that out or anything. One of my uh, buddies gave me this who works on a firing range and he's seen guys get stuff under their, in their eyes, like metal, in their eyes, uh, even with wearing eye pro because they were wearing prescription glasses. This is actually a decently powerful magnet. You can wave it right in front of the eye, pull that metal out and uh, start that healing process sooner. So I do have a couple of the little bitty Optic screwdrivers that come with most of the optics that I buy. Stock wrench. <laughs> like a couple of you know why when I get there and oh my gun's coming loose. And the castle duck it's not on there correctly, blah blah blah. All that sort of thing. So blue Loctite is in here also. Blue Loctite is a smart thing to have. So uh, one of the things that took me forever to come around to carrying was a torque wrench. These aren't cheap. Again, off Amazon, they're around 50-ish dollars. Uh, you can get them at your local gun shops all the time, too. Uh, they're made in the same place, so the, the wheeler seems to be uh, kind of the, the go-to for everybody, but keep it in the case. Most of the little uh, bits are in here. I do tend to have a little thing of extra bits, uh, something common like 3 8 See that in a lot of scope mounts, like LaRue scope mounts, that sort of thing. Uh, this goes from 10 to 60 pounds or inch pounds uh man uh, i've been on the range with folks and they started getting diagonal shifts while they're working on their zero look down there and their scope is actually not sitting level inside of the mount so you got to unscrew it and align it correctly tighten it all down if you're putting one on and or you're putting a scope into a mount or rings and you're not using a torque wrench you're wrong so uh not one of those things that i have specifically to make it easier on my clients and myself on the range. You can put loop blue Loctite on it, click them all down, and in 15 minutes, complete your zero, and you'll be fine. Clear Eye Pro. This is one of those little plastic boxes you get ammo in, the, the ammo that I don't tend to buy. Got my Clear Eye Pro in here. I've got like cat crap and other optics lens covers, an extra pair of foamies and that sort of thing, just so I can grab that up and like, now I'm like, oh, we're indoors now? Here, I got this. Oh, it's got, suddenly got dark outside. My sunglasses are too dark. Got my clear eye pro right here and they're well protected. So, uh, battery clips, which is not really the coolest name in the world. Battery mag would have been cooler, you know, been a little more shootery. But anyway, uh, lithium double A's. This is, yeah, the lithium double A one, whatever. And uh, CR123s, you can see how many are left in it. And that just slide thing right out. And it's, Holds them in there nice nice and well. I got a uh, nine volt one also. Not a lot of stuff out there that runs on nine volt, but I have seen it. Old chronographs, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't buy lithiums in nine volt, uh, mainly because they're about 17 bucks a piece and I don't care about your chronograph enough to buy you one of those. Regular ones are pretty cheap, so not too worried about it. In the very bottom, I have a staple gun 
and a box of extra staples. It's about a thousand staples in here. That way you can't run out of staples instead of just buying like the little packages, the little cardboard ones, cardboard ones that can just come apart after a while. I make sure I have uh, something that'll be held in. So I do have targets, just keep B8s in the bottom of this thing. Also I have my zeroing targets. I made these in half inch increments and got them inside a little plastic sleeve that came with uh, some of my LaRue stuff that I purchased years ago because they like to actually give you a bunch of extra stuff because they're Americans. So anyway, uh, this is basically what I keep in here. So if I reverse this whole thing, put everything back in here, you'll notice I actually still have a significant amount of room inside of the box. I just move stuff around a little bit to make it more advantageous what I'm going to what I'm more likely to use versus what I'm less likely to use that sort of thing you can make dividers to go in here glue them in there so there's all kinds of things you can do to make this efficient and make your time at the range better so one of the easy things for me is like oh well I'm going to do pistol stuff so well, here's my bag of a dozen magazines fits right in there oh you know I'm going to be working with rifle here's I can put another half dozen magazines in here uh, I can put a pistol bag with a pistol in here with all this in here also and just have this guy right here. Uh, one of the things I do like to leave in here and you should be taking with you to the range is the ability to clean your hands. Uh, you can buy the lead off, blah, 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 you know, whatever. This stuff works fine. I do use it. Just little hand wipes. Uh, they make the smaller ones. This one's rigid. Boom. Fits all the way in here and I can close it up. So uh that's pretty much all i got in here in the event i'm doing anything else if i'm not or if i'm doing like red dot zeroing or anything like that i can throw a couple of two by six in here one of these guys you know i can't carry you know all the other pistol stuff or the mags and all that but i can carry one or two of these this bag and now i've got a solid rest uh to be able to actually get a legitimate zero from instead of just halfing it like most people do uh, I do like the MGM steel targets. They're great. I don't tend to keep a rigid cleaning rod in here. Uh, I have those uh, mostly stowed in the stocks of most of my guns, so uh, I do have them. Uh, if, if you don't, you should probably get a fold-up one. I just got one in a little PVC pipe that I keep in my trailer for clients. Uh, great for if you have blown blown round that it won't come out. And with uh, today's ammunition, if you shoot enough, it's, it's going to happen. So anyway... Uh, I know this wasn't a, a little one minute quip or anything like that, but hope this helps you get set up better for training, more productive shooting time while you're out on the range. So till then, stay safe, keep shooting, and I'll see you on the range.